say that still now, babe. That's, That's freezing cold. It like to see freezing cold. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Dad Science with me, Tom Warren from Classroom Medics. And I've also got my daughter Beatrice with me here again today. We have a fist bump for science. And we've also got a very special guest with us today. We have got, who's this B? Elsa from Fresno from Elsa and Ella Vickers. Yeah, that's right. Elsa. Yeah, you love Elsa, don't you? This is Elsa from Frozen, so if you've not seen Frozen, where have you been for the past uh, year or so? So, the reason we've got Elsa with us is we're doing instant ice. We're going to turn the water in this bottle into ice in an instant. So, you may have seen this trick done with Dynamo. He picks up a bottle from someone and he gives it a shake, and the water turns to ice instantly. And we're going to show you how to do that. So, what you'll need for this experiment is some unopened bottles of water. So just the cheapest bottle, these are like two quid for 12 bottles. Okay, so screw cap, not open, fully sealed. I've taken the label off. Remember to do that before you use them later on, so take the labels off those. A cup, like this, uh, like a big mug. A glass bowl, like this, or just a bowl or a dish. Glass is best because you can see what happens actually inside the bowl. You need a load of salt. Okay, so I've got a big bag here. You're going to put at least 500, 600 grams of salt. So get the cheapest table salt you can get. Um, I've also got a wooden spoon to do some mixing. I also managed to pick up a thermometer from Asda. Okay, uh, this thermometer costs 50p in the summer sale, so it's in their seasonal aisle at the moment. So it's a summer time, so they've got all their summer gardening stuff out. That was meant to be a pound, but it was 50p. And um, you also need bags of ice. So this is a two kilo bag of ice, and it cost a pound. So you need about two or three of those. I pick up two or three at a time because you can do loads of experiments. But for one bucket like this, okay, um, one bag should just about be enough. You can do it in a bowl, a washing up bowl, any kind of bucket, but one bag should be enough. But get at least two. They're a pound from Morrison's and a pound from Asda as well. And then if you want to, you can try some other experiments. Get oh, this is a bottle of soda water. So this has got lots of uh, bubbles in there, carbon dioxide in there. Um, get some smaller ones if you want to. I'm going to try it with a big one today and see what happens. But get some fizzy water as well. And that's pretty much all you need. So this is how you do the experiment. You ready for it, B? Good stuff. Let's go. So I've put about a bag and a half of ice into the bucket. Um, and I've put some water in as well so you can see... You can move the ice around but it's not too, not too much water in there. But you should be able to put a bottle of water in and submerge it. Okay. So, once you put your ice and water in, you need to put about 600 grams of salt in. And that's basically about one mug's worth, okay? So I'm gonna do this like this, here we go. Grab that B, thank you. And then just sprinkle it in. And this is the bit where you need the spoon, because you're gonna mix it in. Yeah, you can mix it, B. Don't do it with your hands because what's going to happen, the salt is going to super cool the water to below about minus 6 to minus 10 degrees C. So, B, give it a good mix. So, you want to make sure... That was very noisy. That was very noisy. You want to make sure that you've mixed it in quite well. You might get a bit collecting at the bottom. Try and scoop that up every now and then. Then, if you've got your thermometer, pop it in. Okay, leave it in there for a while and you're going to have to get, now get your bottles of water and pop those into the ice. I'm going to put two or three in. So I put two or three bottles of water in, made, made sure they're fully submerged. This is where you might want to get, uh, keep an eye on the time and you want to wait for about eight to ten minutes. Okay, eight to ten minutes for this to work. So after a couple of minutes, the, th the thermometer has gone down to about minus five degrees C. So I'm actually going to just put a little bit more salt in there. I'm going to have to get a wooden spoon again. You don't want to do this by hand because the temperature's really cold. You can actually get an iceberg. So once you've got your bucket ready, you've got your ice, your water, your bottles of water and your salt all mixed in, okay? You're going to have to wait about 8 to 10 minutes 
for the water in the actual bottles to get cold enough for what we want to do. Okay. Now if you've got your thermometer in there, have a look at it and it'll go down to, as it's currently at minus 8 degrees C, so that's really cold, so be careful putting your hand in the water, it's freezing cold, it's so cold it might give you an ice burn. It gets so cold that the outside of the bucket has condensation on the outside now and that'll freeze, the water in there will get so cold it'll freeze. Give it a little stir every now and then, but be, but be, not just yet darling, but be, 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 be really gentle because if you knock the actual bottles of water near the end of the 10 minutes, okay, we'll get a reaction. We don't want that to happen. So don't knock the actual bottles of water near the end of the experiment. So it's just a waiting game now. About eight to 10 minutes, you'll see what happens. So our eight to 10 minutes are up. We're gonna take one of the bottles out very, very gently. And then this is what you've got to do. You ready, B? Yeah. Just come back a bit. Come back, back to where you were. So, put it flat, okay, and then you need to just slam it down on the table. And it creates ice instantly. Do you see that, Dee? Yeah, is it ice? Yeah, it's ice. Who's it like doing that? Elsa. Yeah, that's right, it's like Elsa. So we've created some instant ice. You should have seen the ice crystals form down the bottle instantly. I'm going to do another one a bit more closer up so you can see it right now. Yeah, of course you can. So here's a bit more of a close-up shot of what happens when you slam the bottle down. You can see the ice crystals instantly form down the bottle and inside. Okay, it's a bit like a slush puppy inside, it's a little bit of give, but you can see the ice crystals form all the way down the bottle. It also works if you shake it really hard, just like Dynamo does, you get exactly the same effect. So for the next part of the experiment, this is where you need your glass bowl or plate or dish, it doesn't matter, but we've done a glass bowl so you can see it a bit more clearly. And what I should have told you was to keep several ice cubes behind out of your bags of ice. So you shouldn't have used them all in the bucket, but you should have several spare. Just put a couple in the bowl like that. Get your super cool water and very slowly trickle it onto the ice cubes. And as soon as the water contacts the ice, it turns to ice. And you create your own Elsa ice mountain. There you go, you can see it fell over there, a bit too big. But as I pour the water on, it turns into instant ice. So this big two litre bottle of soda water has been in the bucket for about half an hour now, so hopefully this will work. I'm going to release the cap and see if any of the bubbles that are released from the actual soda make it turn into ice. There you go, it's started, there you go. Ice crystals coming down the bottle. This is what I was talking about with the imperfections. The release of carbon dioxide gas when you open the soda are the imperfections that the ice crystals are forming around. You can see it's still spreading all the way down the bottle. So there's two bits of science in this experiment. The first bit is the bucket with the ice, the water and the salt. And the second bit of science is to do with the bottle. So we'll start with the bucket. We put the water, the ice and the salt. So water, these are water molecules, freezes at zero degrees C. And what happens is at that temperature, the water molecules lose energy and come together and actually stick together with a bond, okay? But when you add the salt into that, the salt molecules actually get in the way of the water molecules sticking together to form the ice crystal, okay? So the salt gets in the way, and what happens is the temperature has to go even lower for the actual water molecules to lose even more energy and stick together. So salt lowers the freezing point of water. That's why we put it on the roads or on the pavements or grit on the roads and pavements to lower the freezing point of water so we don't get any ice on the roads. Now inside the bottle, we had just plain still water. And this water um, was actually below zero degrees C. It, it was the same temperature as the ice and the water in the bucket. So this water in here had reached minus six, minus seven, minus eight degrees C, but it wasn't ice. And the reason it wasn't ice is because we need a process of, called nucleation to start. And what happens is nucleation is where an ice crystal forms around 
some kind of imperfection in the water or in the bottle. So an imperfection could be a scratch, it could be a bit of dirt, it could be a bit of dust. But because this was a sealed bottle of water, there was none of that. But when we shook the bottle, we created some air bubbles at the top. The air at the bottle, the water kind of folded over that and created some air bubbles for the ice crystals to form around. And once you get one ice crystal in nucleation, the other ice crystals begin to form around it. And it's like a kind of a, a snowball process, okay? So you get one ice crystal and the next follows and they all build up around it. And you get a spread of ice molecules throughout the bottle. So that's the science behind instant ice. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Dad Science and I hope to see you again very soon.